Hello, this is the Trial On Podcast. I'm your host, Bo. This is my co-host, Denny. Hey, mate. How's it going? Good, mate. Prelim finals this week, so I'm excited. Uh, in this episode, we're going to talk a little bit of NRLW, a little bit of NRL, and a little bit about just the news that's going on this week. What are we going to start with, Denny? Uh, Rightio. So this week, um, we're going to start off with um, a bit of Kyle Flanagan news. Um, there's been talk, the risk the, they want to get away from him. Um, they don't want to re-sign him past the 2021 season. And um, there's a there's a couple of rumors going around that the um, that the doggies want him. So, yeah. do you think he'd be a he'd be a good fit for them, or is there another team you think should go after him as well? Um, I would do- doggies is a great fit. Um, there's heaps of teams that could use a halfback right now. Um, doggies, and I think uh, the Warriors could probably use a halfback as well. Um, Nick Arima's Nick Arima's going alright, but Kyle Flanagan, he's just like. He reminds me of kind of a steady hand, you know what I mean? Like kind of a controlling halfback. Yeah. When I first heard about this news, I thought it was pretty rough on Kyle Flanagan. But then the more I thought about it, the more I thought it's probably a good thing for his career. Like the Roosters could always just have him sit in reserve grade and not play him and then no one else no one else have him and then his career is over kind of thing. But he, they're, them telling him that, look, you can move on, go find an opportunity somewhere else. They know they've got other options there. They've got that Sam Walker coming through and Lachlan Lamb as um, people they've identified can do a job for them for uh, the years coming. So uh, good on the Roosters for letting him go and and letting him be what he's going to be. I, th- I think he's a good talent and I think he's only grown. He's only played, look, what, 29 games in first grade. So he's only young and he's got... He's got a long career ahead of him, so let him go. I thought it was good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think there was a there's a, a lot of pressure on him. They put a lot of pressure on him this year, saying Bruce is going to win three in a row. Yeah, I think that's a lot of pressure to put on a what is he twenty years old? Yeah, I think he's twenty one. He's so, yeah, twenty two. He's, he's only young, and um, he's never going to be Cooper Cronk. But um, like t- this year, he wasn't going to be Cooper Cronk. He might be Cooper Cronk in six, seven, eight, nine years, but not this year. So let him go. Let him do what he's going to do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, anyway, we're going to uh, do something a little bit differently this week. We're going to start with the um, NRLW games. Um, so they're on Saturday. We've got the first one, the Dragons Warriors. Um, that's at 12.30 p.m. Um, the Dragons, they've got some pretty big outs. Uh, they've got Isabel, Isabel Kelly. She's out with ankle injury. Uh, Tiana Panatani moves in from the ring and Rakia Horn slots in the two jersey. Uh, both back rowers are out for the Dragons. Kez Yaps and Shaley Bent. Kez Yaps with knee injury and Shaley Bent is suspended. Um, and a couple of changes for the Warriors as well. Um, they got a new halfback, Naomi Kara. Uh, Hilda Peters, she comes in from the bench to start at hooker. And Samantha Economos, she um, she comes into the squad and she starts a prop with a couple of the other players dropping out of the 17. Um, it should be a pretty good game. I'll tip the Warriors. I think they'll be a bit too strong considering um, the outs that uh, the Dragons have. Did you say um, one of the Dragons players went from the wing to hooker? I think uh, it was a bit early. That's unbelievable. No, 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 no. Not me. No. I, I thought you said the winger moved to play wing last week and went to hooker this week. Hey, that's, that's, that's in the next game. Oh, no. Well, I heard that wrong. All right. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm going to go... Um, Oh, I'll go the Dragons. They're both going to be desperate for this one. They both not won a game, so I think the Dragons need to prove that. Though I think they're one of the favourites to win the comp, all the favourites. So they need to yeah. prove that um, that they are the real deal and just get a consolation win. Neither of these guys can make the grand final, so I think the Dragons. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Oh, the Dragons. Mm. So we're uh, on opposite ends of the ends there. Yeah. Um, but anyway, on to the next game at 4 p.m. We've got the Roosters versus the Broncos. So this is the one. This is the weird one. Uh, the Broncos winger, Lauren Brown. She played wing last week. She comes in and she starts at hooker this week. I see. I thought I read that somewhere. I thought I read yeah, that. Yeah, no, yeah, no. That's um that's the Broncos winger. Bloody Jeez. there's been some there's some there's been some weird movement. Like last week there was a winger that went and played in the back row. I mean, Jeez. I guess they can play anywhere. Mrs. Fix it's um, there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, Sinead Sesolska, I said her name last week. I don't know if it if it's right or not, but she moves in from the bench to the wing. I'm pretty sure she was playing the forwards last week as well. Oh, really? Um, yeah, and then there's just a couple of changes there. 
Amber Hall and Lavinia Gould. They're replaced by Talisha Harden and Shantae Tamara. It was like the Rimba Magpies put me on the wing. They just needed me in the squad. They just yeah. they needed me presence. I was I had, I had no right to be on the wing. 100, <laughs> 115 kilos couldn't run the hundred in fifteen minutes, but they threw me on the wing. And right, you know CF, what? I did, CF, I did a job. I did a job. Yeah, yeah mate. <laughs> well, well, this will be the two teams that play in the grand final this year. So, bloody, I think it'll be a good game. Well, good game. I'll, I'll get. I'll back the Roosters. Well, I've said the Broncos the from the start. I tipped the no, Broncos no, 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 from no, no. from round one. So I'm I'm sticking on the Broncos. I, I'm, I was on them the whole way, and I, like I said at the start of the year, that Tamika Upton, she's a gun, and they're gonna get it done. They'll get it done this week and get it done next week. That's me red on tip for the week. I don't, I don't think you can bet on the women, but if you could, house is on uh, the Broncos. No, no, we should um we should have like some kind of comp between the two of us. Where all right, a case we... a case whoever wins this game here. Oh, Jesus! All right, yeah, okay, okay done. Broncos to make Upton. If to make Upton goes over, and the Broncos you win, you buy me two cases. Mate, the Broncos have a winger playing in a hooker. Yeah, she's a surprise packet, mate. It's only a four. <laughs> it's only a four week season. They they gotta they gotta have some tactics. They gotta have some pro- surprises in there. She's a she's a hooker. She's played hooker a whole life. I guarantee it. All right, on to the men. Tomorrow night, the Storm and the Raiders. Huge game. They they just always seem to play in the finals. Like this will be the third time in five years that the Raiders have met the Storm in a prelim. So that's just that's nuts. Uh, the other two times they played in a prelim. Both scores were separated by two points. So, oh, really? Yeah. Well, you do. could two be us. Uh, could be happening again. Um, Dal Finucane looks like he's going to return for this one after he's it's returned from his calf injury. Uh, he trained well today. Uh, Munster's also been training all week, so he should be right. I doubt they would um, have him miss this game. The Raiders are unchanged, and uh, Soliola and Tom Starling are expected to start again. The Raiders haven't won at Suncorp in almost 10 years. So the last time they won there was 2010. And I am going to take the Raiders by two points. Ooh. ooh. Yeah. Well, the Storm have won 19 games in a row up at Queensland. Um, I think this will be, pardon me, a really good game. Maybe a battle of the sixes. Maybe Cam Munster v. Jack Whiten. Um, They're both really good players. I think they... Both have quite a similar play style in, in the sense that they're both really good runners of the footy. Uh, maybe Munster just a bit lighter on his feet. Um, yeah, yeah, well, for sure. And I was I was actually thinking about it this week. Um, question without notice. Has it been the year of the 5-8? Like, you look at the four 5-8s that are left in the <clears> comp. <throat> like, Cody Walker, Jack Whiten, um, uh, Cameron Munster, and Jerome Luai. They've been some of the form players in the comp, and five eights have been killing it this year. Where halfbacks, on the other hand, you would you would say Cleary's been the pick of them, and then it's been a little bit like daylight behind him. So five eights just killing it this year. Yeah, I definitely think so because you think of some of the other teams that did make the eight. There's there was Kurt Manny played for the Knights. He was having yeah. probably his best year yeah. at that um at five eight. Definitely. Yeah, Dylan Brown, who did a job when Mitch Moses got injured and he and he filled in. Yeah, he's sure. really he's one of Parramatta's best players. Um, who else made the bloody eight? Uh, the Sharks, Roosters, Cole, Cole Fleming, and they're the ones that got that dropped in. But the Sharks, you talk about the Sharks when um when Sean Johnson played halfback, he had the most um try assists in the comp. Mm. So it has it has been oh uh, yeah, but he's a five eight. That's what I meant. He's a five eight, but he filled yeah, in yeah, 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 yeah. But it has been the year of the five eight, and I can just. The Raiders have got a, a feeling about him this year, I think. Just a little bit of an aura, a little bit like... And you felt it... I felt it when I was at the game last week. I just can't... I can't see him losing. You know what? I'm going to go against you. I think the Storm by two points. Yeah. It's going to be a cracker. So, and I, I want to yeah. um, I want to say, before we keep going on, um, I can see any of these teams beating any of these teams. Okay, so just because I picked the Raiders, I wouldn't be surprised if the Storm win and the next game I, I could see either team winning as well. So, And we both said that. We, we both think any <coughs> team can win the comp this year. It's so wide open. It's really good. But So Raiders by two, Storm by two. Let's move on. Panthers, Rabbitohs. Uh, we're going to the game this weekend, so that'll be good. We'll get um, some video of that for you. Um, now, i got a stat for this game as well. 
The Panthers beat the Raiders in round seven, right? It was twenty to twelve. They haven't beat the Raiders. The they the Panthers haven't beat the Rabbitohs twice in one year since two thousand three. They won the comp in two thousand three. Oh really? Yeah. So the last time Maybe, they beat yeah, yeah. Well, the last time they beat the Rabbitohs twice in a year, they won the comp. So that's that's just nuts how those kind of things work out. Um, kick hours out, which is a big out because I think. Parramatta had a lot of success around Adam Reynolds early in the game, and Adam and Kickouts on that left edge. So I feel like they should, could have had some um, some success there definitely this week. Um, Kirk Catewell is a great player. He'll probably play Origin this year, um, but he's not as dominant of a runner as what Kickout would be. Um, I, I love I love South, and I'll be I'll be going for him this week, but I'm going to take the Panthers by ten points. <coughs> Yeah, mate. I think that I think this game, as, as you said earlier, this game could go either way. Uh, both these teams are on fire. You know, Panthers, they've won six. Was it sixteen in a row? Yeah, I think yeah, sixteen yeah. in a row. This this will be the seventeenth win if they if they get if they get it done. Um, but the Bunnies have really fi- found their um their stride in the in the last month, maybe two months. Yeah. Um, they're just looking looking really good I on think, the back of Cody Walker. I think the Rabbitohs, if they play their best game. I think they'll win. But I don't know if they can be as consistent for 80 minutes. And to beat this Panthers team, you're going to have to do it for 80 minutes. Because mm. if you give them ball, they can put on points quick too. And Nathan Cleary's in that good a form that he can just kick him to a win. Like he's, They're not going to give you the easy ball like uh, Parra did. And they're not going to make yeah. the same mistakes Parra did. So, but if, if the Rabbitohs are on, they can win. But I just I think the Panthers are just going to be too classy for them. Yeah, yeah, me too. I'll I'll be tipping the Panthers. I think yeah, one to twelve probably. Um, anyway, we've got some uh, some news out of mixed mail. We've got some mixed mail this week. Um, he's uh, tipping Storm and Raiders to go over, and Souths head to head, and that'll get you about five dollars forty two. Uh, so good luck, punters. Yeah, well, like I said, we're going to the game this week. It's gonna it's gonna be a banger. Um, enjoy all four games, guys. And we'll be back here wrapping up and giving our grand final preview next week. We can't wait. Enjoy your dinner, guys.